you've read the title. If you haven't, then you're weird. How can you click on a video without reading the title? You know, it's, it's right there. What made you click on it? This video could have been anything. It could have been absolutely anything. It could have been awful, okay? And you've clicked right on it without reading the title, you nutcase. Anyway, I'm sure by this point everybody's read the title. Yeah, that's right. This is the final episode of Hermitcraft Season 7. Honestly, it feels a little bit strange saying that. Simply because I think we can all agree that the end of this season for me has been a little bit strange. You know, these past five months have been a bit odd for me making Minecraft and Hermitcraft videos and I haven't really been so present on the Hermitcraft server. Hilariously, my housing renovations literally finished two days ago, so on the day that I'm ending my Hermitcraft season is essentially the day that the thing that stopped me making Hermitcraft episodes is finished. The good news is though, this does mean that I'm going to be completely clear when it comes to recording episodes for Hermitcraft season eight and I'm going to be fully committed. That is going to be my number one priority. However, despite the past few months, this season has been absolutely incredible. Season 7 has featured a huge variety of different builds, starting off with the little hobbit hole, complete with other hobbit hole that has a tunnel connecting us to another hobbit hole. This tunnel is actually surprisingly long. It is really quite big. Here is the other hobbit hole. Of course, I can't take credit for this one, but it's just surprising that there were two hobbit holes on the server at the same time. We genuinely didn't plan that. Then, of course, we have the Hermit Challenges area, which Hermit Challenges was probably one of the longest running events of Hermitcraft Season 7. You know that? That ran for an incredibly long time. In fact, didn't Iskal recently challenge me to something? I can't remember what he challenged me to. But of course, this little area here provided us with a lot of fun and a lot of stupidity, especially in the early days of the season. Definitely some of my most memorable moments of the season come from this area right here. Charrot, I fear you may be left in Hermitcraft Season 7 but I appreciate you. Here we have the villager district, which was my first major building project, I guess you'd call it, in this season. I actually started this in episode three, which is, that's pretty early to start like a major farming thing. But actually weirdly enough, Hermitcraft season seven at the start seemed to be all about villagers. Like pretty much everyone started the season building up villager breeders and also villager trading halls. So that actually wasn't that out of the ordinary. The thing is, if you can get yourself a decent set of villagers and then of course get yourself set up with an iron farm, then really you've got a lot of your resources sorted. So it is quite important to get these early on. I mean, the fact that I had this iron farm all constructed by episode four meant that I never had to worry about constructing hoppers and pistons or anything like that for the rest of the season. And even though I really want to mix things up for Hermitcraft season eight, I can't help but feel like I probably will start the season with an iron farm again, just because it's so incredibly useful. But I don't want to give away too many of my plans that I have for the season because well, you're gonna have to wait and see what I'm doing. Now, this little villager trading hall was the bane of my life, along with that villager breeder over there, and also the villager conversion area. All of these things broke on multiple occasions, and all of them have been reconstructed multiple times, and eventually I got to a point where this thing was set up very well. I also really like the way this area is decorated. I absolutely love all of the villager heads and the customizations that were made as well. Yes, I am very aware of the gigantic green head that did appear at some point. I can't remember when, and I can't remember when I noticed it, but I didn't notice it. Now onto the big one. I was actually incredibly surprised to see how early I started work on the mega base. I genuinely thought I had started it around about 12 or 13 episodes in, but I got to work on this thing on episode six. You know, I planned out the gigantic octagons, is it octagons? Yeah, octagons. I planned out the gigantic octagons and the space that this place was going to go into in the sixth episode of Hermitcraft Season 7. Now, obviously, this thing right here was an absolutely mega project that took many months to complete. We started off with the actual shape of it and then the wrenches went in place and everyone was a little bit confused as to what this base was going to be all about. And then I think... It was the outsides of the tower, I want to say. I started getting those in place, and then the central section went in, and it all kind of came together quite quickly. That makes it sound like it happened overnight. It was actually episode 36 that this thing was officially completed, and then obviously since then there's been incremental improvements and upgrades. The most important ones being the chains that were added by Scar that I think just ties the whole construction together. The whole idea behind this base is that this is an ancient monument and a futuristic civilization has come along and preserved it. And I really think the chains just completely sell that. Before, it was a tiny bit disconnected, but now it makes total sense. My mega base this season is definitely my proudest achievement in terms of building, I think in Minecraft ever. 
I just really like the way that it looks. I like the way that it's proportioned. I just think, I think it's a really cool looking build. And importantly, you may notice, I have managed to keep this thing alive. I mean, sort of, not me. I think it was more my neighbors. They, they did a very good job of keeping it alive for me, but it didn't completely die. So that means I can actually retrieve my diamond blocks from this chest right here. Look at this. We can add these into the vault. That is a lot of diamonds. Here we are. All of these valuable resources that I spent 100 days mining that I never actually used. I could go into the shopping district and just have an enormous shopping spree. I mean, that could be an idea. But yeah, the base with a golden heart. I really am going to miss this thing. And I'm really going to struggle to top it in Hermitcraft Season 8. I do have some cool plans, but honestly, I don't know if they're as cool as this. Might need to go back to the drawing board a bit. But of course, between starting my base and finishing my base, there were tons of other things that we worked on. The button, which I think the only evidence left of the button are the little infinity stones that Green has kept in his mansion. Then we had this plot in the shopping district. You see, my plan for Hermitcraft Season 7 was to build unconventional shops. I wanted to build slightly strange shops. And, well, you know, I had varying degrees of success. My first store was the Pass It On store. There was a little shulker box inside the shop that had a bunch of different things in it. And you would come along and you would replace all the things in the shulker box with your own stuff. So if the shulker box had things that you needed, you would just trade. So there was no diamonds involved. It was just pure old school trading. That, uh, yeah, that totally failed. So I tore that down and I built a little store that sold my mustache and my suit and my trousers. <laughs> And that was a huge success. That was actually my most successful store of Hermitcraft Season 7. And it led to some incredibly comical shenanigans over in Toon Towers with Tango. But eventually that got replaced with Grumbot Jr. for the Mumbo for Mayor campaign. We should probably actually go and check on Grumbot because he's been living in that alternate universe over off the edge of the shopping district for quite some time now. I hope he's okay. He seems to be in an eternal state of bliss, which I think is honestly the best life for him. I mean, as far as he's concerned, I became the mayor, we constructed all sorts of moustache related things over in the shopping district and everything was great. He also has absolutely no idea that the Mycelium War ever happened, which is definitely for the best because I don't know if his little heart could have taken it. Bless you, Grumbot. I hope when the server shuts down, it doesn't hurt too much. Just before the mayoral campaign started, I started work on my gigantic industrial district. An industrial district is something that I actually played with in Hermitcraft Season 6. I didn't plan on making an industrial district in Hermitcraft Season 6. I started a witch farm and then the perimeter around the witch farm just seemed perfect for putting more farms in. So when it came to Hermitcraft Season 7, I knew I wanted to take this concept seriously and I knew I wanted an area where I would put all of my farms. Now this is another project that took an incredibly, incredibly long time. Many months have been spent filling all of the farms into this thing, designing all the different farms, getting them all slotted in, getting them all connected up getting all of the items up into the central section. And in terms of Minecraft farming projects, this is definitely one that I am incredibly, incredibly proud of. I absolutely love this place. I think it looks fantastic. I think it's so, so cool. I love just flying around it and seeing all of the builds so close to one another. And I just think it's really, really cool having all of the farms in one place so I can stay here, I can AFK, and I can get all of the resources. Which, in this storage system right here, I have space for 1 million items. And we did a pretty good job at actually filling up most of those spaces. You see, Iskal commented on my leak, but this is actually overflow. It just overflows items into here. Now, I was meant to put flames at the end of it, and I completely forgot, so all the items just land down there. But it never it never ended up being that many items. Flag protection never really was my strong suit. Regardless, of course, with the industrial district producing so many items, I knew that I had to get them out somehow to other players of the server. And that's where the Industrial Day Pass store started. Another one of my slightly unconventional businesses, essentially people pay for a day pass to travel to my industrial district and they can grab as much as they like. And it was somewhat successful. Like it generated a large number of diamonds, but actually people taking all the resources meant that I had to actually start buying firework rockets. So it, it kind of made it so that it wasn't successful. I ended up making a loss. As I say, shopping wasn't exactly my strongest my strongest attribute of Hermitcraft Season 7, and that is definitely something that I want to change for Hermitcraft Season 8. But actually, on the topic of farms and things, I built a few nether farms as well. So this is my gigantic gold farm. Honestly, I don't think I've been here in a very, very long time, but it's an incredibly efficient XP grinder slash gold generator. And I always think they look super cool just floating up above the nether in all the bedrock and things. This was incredibly useful for obviously 
well, getting loads of XP and getting loads of gold. That kind of goes without saying, doesn't it? One thing that I do always enjoy about nether-based farms, though, is that, of course, you can't use water to move items around, so you have to use slime blocks which always looks completely crazy when items are flowing through it. Now, just off over here, we also have a fully automatic basalt farm as well, which generates just a ridiculous number of basalts per hour. I mean, it's completely insane. And once again, because we can't use water to move it around, I think, yeah, we've had to use piston feed tapes to actually create a conveyor belt for the basalt. I remember constructing this and being very proud, and I'm still proud of it. I mean, just look how cool this thing is. Look, TNT drops down, basalt gets pushed across. Everything falls down there and then gradually gets moved into the hoppers. This, these are the sorts of farms that I just really enjoy constructing. Now there is one farm that I'm not going to be showing in this Hermitcraft episode. And that is my Wither Skeleton farm. And that is for the simple reason that it doesn't actually exist anymore. Which is, yeah, a little bit strange. I went to go and work on it a couple of months ago and it had just disappeared. It had just completely disappeared and nobody really understands how. You know, we have programs that purge the nether so that the world doesn't get too big just to keep it a little bit less laggy but they're not meant to erase things that have been constructed and you know the the rules for it are that the chunks have to be loaded for a minimum of three minutes i think anything under than three minutes the chunks get deleted and it definitely took more than three minutes for me to build my wither skeleton farm so it doesn't really make any sense why it's disappeared but it has disappeared it's gone it's just completely removed it's not on any of the backups nobody knows what happened to it i've started to question whether or not i actually built it on the hermitcraft server i did i definitely did i know that i did but it's still i don't know it feels weird the good thing is i guess that gives us a really cool project to work on in hermitcraft season eight. Oh dear Oh dear, oh dear. You know, earlier on when I said that I was going to be experimenting with slightly more unconventional shops this season, that was my plan. Well, that's definitely not my plan for Hermitcraft Season 8. Alright, because all of my unconventional shops have basically failed, with oh dear being the biggest failure. In fact, it's so much of a failure that the Wikipedia page about oh dear actually calls it unsuccessful. The only time it was even remotely successful is when I just basically forced builds on people. <laughs> I went to their bases, built up redstone contraptions from Odeer, and then charged them for it. I mean, I feel like that's not really a sale. But I'll be honest, I'm still super proud of this thing. I really like the concept. I think it's a funny idea to have flat pack redstone contraptions that you then have to go to a website and follow a tutorial for the build. I think it's cool. But clearly the hermits didn't think so. As I say, at least this shop was somewhat successful. And also this shop right here, being successful as well that that was a bonus that definitely brought in some diamonds especially when i charged people five diamonds for instructions on how to change their skins back and it literally just said open up your minecraft launcher and change your skin that one was a bit of a scam i feel a tiny bit guilty about that and then of course we had the hermitcraft hcbbs which uh, i obviously didn't build and i had absolutely nothing to do with constructing or anything like that and that led to some pretty interesting and very massive projects over in scars base the first one being the chest monster 2.0 which it can store how many millions? I mean, it was a decent number of millions of items, wasn't it? With that being said, if I was to build it again, I would definitely have a better item input system because it took, I think, about a month to get all the items out of these chests here into the chests over here. I mean, that's just ridiculous. We also built up this gigantic piston door for Scar so that he could build a room in this mountain if he wanted to, which, I mean, this thing is just satisfying with a capital S, isn't it? This is a wicked redstone build. And then, of course, we have Scar's gigantic super smelter, which is down underneath the ground down here somewhere. I'm not going to break any blocks because I will definitely break the super smelter. So all in all, Hermitcraft Season 7 has been a very interesting season filled with tons of different projects that I'm very proud to say I have completed. You know, I've completed pretty much every single project that I started. And the projects that I've started have been absolutely mega. So the fact that I've been able to complete every single one of them is is incredibly satisfying however i really do feel like i'm forgetting something oh yeah i mean i i guess do i count the many hours of mining that i did is this a project you know i guess the vault i guess there was the vault there was there was that oh yeah there is also one other thing i made the vault for the mycelium resistance stuff you know remember when the the war was going on and we had this this place down here and there was a big old heist and then we did the tunnel balls and we broke into the big headquarters it was all it was all a big thing still feel like i'm forgetting something oh, of course during the hcbbs there was the hermitcraft bumbo baggin society i built up this area here and i'm actually incredibly proud of this place still 
I am terrible at interiors. I struggle with them so much, and this actually looks really quite cool. There is definitely one more thing, though. I guess there was the in-between bases base built by Bumbo Baggins, but inspired by Iskal, also known as the IBBBBBBBBI, but... I mean, that's still disappeared. You know, my actual base kind of replaced that one. I don't think there's anything left. Nope, that's definitely everything. That is definitely everything. That is every single completed project that I've done on Hermitcraft Season 7. Now, when it comes to uncompleted ones, well, there is a Pacific-sized elephant in the room at this point in time. You really think I would pretend that I'd forgotten this thing? No, I mean, Pacific... Pacific is excellent. It generated some very interesting redstone developments. I'm still so 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 proud of what we managed to achieve in the banking side of things and just the whole system as a whole was really really interesting super super cool and not only is the redstone cool the vault in which we developed the redstone is also incredibly cool the actual store itself and the logo is incredibly cool the squeaky meeting room probably provided the most laughs of anything that i have done in this hermitcraft season it's just it's impossible not to smile when you're standing around on these things but when it comes to the store itself well i think we probably have to hold a bit of an emergency meeting on this one i shall prepare the inflatables and grab myself an iscal prepare your eardrums it's been a while since we've actually been up here, but yeah, this is this is my last episode in in Hermitcraft season seven, and um, I thought I thought we could probably have a bit of a meeting and discuss Pacific a tiny bit because I still think Pacific has been a massive success. Okay, Absolutely. and here's why. how did we do in terms of diamonds? Okay, so on the diamond front, okay, if yes. you're just going to judge it entirely on diamonds. Mm -hmm. Not good. Not not good. Not good. We are definitely well in the negative. I mean, I probably spent... Wait, wait, wait. No. How much did you spend? I spent a lot. You spent, I think, a lot, I imagine. This looks expensive. We have our treasury. How, how much do we have in there? Wait, you have a treasury? Yeah, dude. I've made sure that we have oh, made... Oh, oh, ah, <laughs> take it out! I don't have arrows! I'm a trident boy now! I'm a trident boy! What? Let me just we really, go 50 tridents. We really haven't been here for very long. We really haven't been here in a long time. Okay, fine, fine. Oh, There's, okay. Got to blow out the cobwebs a little bit. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, that smell in here. Uh, okay, so, well, uh, yeah, but, so we, where's this treasury? Right in front of you. I've just realized I'm still squeaking. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Everything is made out of rubber ducks. <laughs> Everything is made out of rubber ducks. That's our secret. <laughs> yeah, it's Look, all rubber. This desk is made out of rubber duck. This rubber duck over here is made I've out of rubber duck. Back. Now everything's back to being solid. Everything's back oh. to being solid for me. So oh. it's just you. Okay. Are you well, going to go? Are you going to commit not. commit to full squeak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're committed to full squeak. I'll, I'll be committed to just non squeak. <laughs> and then between us. We, we can have the right level of squeak. So, okay, well, I guess, I guess, yeah, we, you're right. We do have this treasury. Yeah, we made. This is great success. This is way more that's, than Sahara did. Way more. That is actually incredibly, incredibly true. You know, so mm -hmm. we've got, we've got that. All right. Um, you know, and the banking systems that we constructed, they were successful in that they work and they are very fancy and very cool. That was all done. We got yep. the, ooh! Did you hear that? <laughs> no. That what? was weird. Okay, fine. No, just ignore me. I'm just going completely insane, clearly. Well, yep. the pressure of Pacific <laughs> yep. has just gone to my head, clearly. <laughs> you were saying great success. Elevator, great success. Elevators are great we success. Have palm trees, great success. I mean, palm we trees. We do have palm trees. Yeah, we do. Great and success. Here's the thing. I actually, I went away and I have done a little bit of development on the shop. I took what you did and I thought to myself, you know what? I should probably make it so that it doesn't destroy the area quite so much. So I actually compacted everything down. And this, it would have been this size. So it would have been this size. Wait, so you got inspired by the sign where it says you can do it? Yeah, yeah. No, I got I got really inspired. It all would have worked, but we just, it was it was just the wrong shop at the wrong time, I think, a little bit, you know? We... No, I, I don't know what you're talking about. It was just, <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. This is absolutely perfect. What else is a shop but a pool top roof skyscraper with rubber ducks and a fantastic you dual, know what we could do? mind you, dual, dual flush ride yep. of doom. Well, here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. We can actually, all right, I'm going to take away this sign that says Basil because everyone knows it's Basil anyway. All right. And I'm going to put a mm -hmm. sign here. Okay. Pacific is now open. Yes. Uh, 10 diamonds 
to swim. So we're yes. just we're just mm-hmm. going to completely ignore the fact that this was meant to be a giant shop, and instead pretend that all along the it whole was idea never meant to be anything. Else. It was never meant to be anything other than a water park. So I think that just about does it. Hermitcraft season seven is over. It is finished, it is complete, it has been a ton of fun, there's been a huge variety of projects, we have made loads of progress, it's just been a blast. It's been hilarious, it's just, uh, it feels, it feels strange to see it go. It honestly feels like yesterday that it started, but it also feels like forever ago, like the whole world has changed during the season, it's just been, uh, I'm, I'm weirdly going to miss it. What on earth are those things? Wait. Oh, wait a minute. They arrived now? They finally arrived? <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'll see you in season eight. Thank you everyone for watching, not just today's episode, but also all of the episodes in Hermitcraft season seven. It goes without saying that this season has been the most successful viewership wise of anything that I've ever done. And I have you to thank for that. So thank you for all the support. I really do hope that you are excited for season eight. I'm excited for season eight. So get the hype machines burning.